Hey YouTube, this is Thinking of Pi, and today I'll be showing you how to use a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor with your Raspberry Pi. The sensor itself is pretty simple. It just has two resistors. One is sensitive to temperature, just like the one I did in a previous video, and it also has another resistor sensitive to humidity. As the temperature and humidity changes, the resistance changes, and we can measure, uh, we can calculate the the actual temperature and humidity on the output. The unit also contains a microcontroller, so it just outputs the data over a serial pin, and we can just read the data. It's very simple to use, so let's go check it out. All right, so we've got a pretty simple setup here. We've got our sensor right here. Um, let me pull that out of there. We've got four pins. You can see those on there. This is our sensor. Not a lot to this guy. Um, it's got the four pins. The first pin is voltage, second is serial data, um, it's actually two-way communication, and pin four, right over here, is the, is the ground. Now, pin three I don't believe has any purpose. If anyone happens to know, please let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. I couldn't find anything in the data sheet. It just appears to be a placeholder. We've got voltage here that goes to the voltage pin. Voltage is also going to the, the data pin. And to do that, we need a 10K ohm resistor right there. Pretty simple, not a lot to it. So let's take a look at the code and I'll show you how it works. All right, so there's not a lot to this. Like I said before, the sensor has its own microcontroller. So programming is extremely simple. We have our GPIO, our time, and we're going to be importing a special library called FreeNove DHT. That's something that I had to download so that the sensor would work. You just need to make sure that that is in the same folder as the Python code. So not hard to set up. We need to define the pin that the data pin is connected to. That's on pin 11 or GPIO 17. And then right here, we just uh, tell it which pin it's connected to. We have a counter and we have a loop. We're going to be adding to our counter, um, checking the data, and then if there's no errors, it will just print that the sensor is okay and it's printing out the values of the data. There is um, a couple other lines here for error handling, so you'll see in a minute that it's not the most reliable sensor in the world. Probably won't be using this myself for anything important, but it is cool to see so that we can see how how everything works. So let's go ahead and run it here. Right there, first one, it gives us an error, but it comes back and we can see the humidity and the temperature. We'll occasionally get some errors here, but everything seems to be working fine. Now, according to the data sheet, the minimum temperature is zero degrees Celsius, so it's not even going to work for a weather station. But I do kind of want to see what happens when it's when it's exposed to colder temperatures. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the freezer. All right, so it survived the freezer. And the main reason I wanted to do this is so that you can see the humidity sensor actually working. It's kind of difficult to actually control the humidity, but it gets cold, and then when it warms up, it gets condensation. So we can see the humidity spiking here. I'm gonna stop this now, and you can see it did some pretty weird things as it got cold. We can see it here as the temperature was dropping. We're at 11, gets down to 9, 7, 6. And then it actually 
started getting some weird, unpredictable results here. Everything was just going haywire. I'm kind of surprised it wasn't throwing more errors, but somehow the temperature was actually going up in there. So definitely not the most reliable thing for super cold temperatures. So it's pretty easy to use. You could use this to control um, furnace thermostat, use it as a thermostat. You could use it to control a humidifier, anything normal in the house, nothing too extreme with the DHT11, but not a lot to it. That's all I've got for today though. So next week, I'm going to be showing you how to use a eight by eight matrix keypad. That's gonna be pretty simple, but pretty fun and easy to use. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I'd love to read you guys' comments below. Let me know what you thought, and I'll talk to you all next week. Thanks.